Secretary of Defense of the United Kingdom. It's a very good stuff. Thank you very much from Ukraine to the United Kingdom. London sent Ukraine 14 of the 28 promised tanks, several armored personnel carriers and self-propelled howitzers. Kyiv also received 18 Leopard tanks from Germany. By the end of March, Poland sent 260 T-72 tanks and 14 Leopards to Ukraine. In turn, eight Leopards were transferred by Norway and four by Canada. According to the Minister of Defense, Ukraine also expects a positive decision on fighter jets from its allies. Of course, as the Minister of Defense, I would like to have a complete package of assistance to support the armed forces of Ukraine and the security and defense sector in general. Of course, for a counteroffensive, it is always better to have the opportunity to dominate in the air. It is very important, but we will proceed from the resources and realities that we have today. Spain intends to transfer the first Leopard 2 tanks to Ukraine in the second half of April. Currently, the machines are being prepared after repairs. The Spanish edition of LPs writes about it. And Germany, in addition to tanks, will send 40 modern infantry fighting vehicles. The first of them have already arrived in Ukraine. Germany has found an opportunity to increase its Leopard fleet by another four units, and together with supplies from Sweden and Portugal, this would create a full-fledged tank battle group. These tanks, along with trained Ukrainian tankers, could be a decisive factor in the combat operations. Boris Pistorius, Defense Minister of Germany, on Twitter. The United States also pledged to provide Kyiv with Abrams tanks. According to the head of the Pentagon, the armed forces of Ukraine must also receive F-16 fighter jets in the future. However, Lloyd Austin emphasized they are not critical at this stage of the war. What they need right now, more than anything else, is air defense. Uh, and, and that is the critical need on the battlefield. And, and they also need long-range fires and, and uh, armored capability. And we are providing them a real substantial package of capability. If you're talking like F-16s, uh, whenever, like whenever you make that decision aircraft, in order to uh, but uh, put to together what needs to be put to together sure to provide that, that capability, it's going to be 18 months or so in the making. In the meantime, the NATO allies simultaneously conducted large-scale military drills in Europe led by the U.S. Army. In Germany, a multinational live fire exercise took place, and on the west coast of Denmark, they worked out joint deployments of fire support systems with the participation of American HIMARS, frigate, F-16 fighters, and several types of artillery. Such exercises were held in Denmark for the first time in the last 30 years. Uh, this year, for the first time, we're incorporating a number of new elements, including operating uh, with 18 different nations on a live uh, mission-partnered communications environment. We're operating simultaneously here in uh, Grafenwehr, Germany. Also, the uh, mission that you just witnessed occurred simultaneously up in uh, Oxbowl, Denmark, and down in Romania, a training area there as well. Our alliance consists of 30 nations, and with the, the hopeful ratification of the membership of Sweden and Finland, it will be 32. It's important that all of our nations are able to operate together and seamlessly, and we rehearse and practice things in peacetime so that if we ever have to work together in combat, that we'll be able to do so without having to learn on the fly. Finnish aviation also took part in joint NATO air training operations over Estonia, along with French, Dutch and Estonian fighters. Today we're, you know, we're really excited to work with future allies. Uh, the four Finnish F-18s that have landed here have been conducting planning uh, with our crews as part of that exercise that will also see US, French, Netherlands and Estonian uh, aircraft. According to U.S. Army General Mark Milley, NATO must act urgently to rule out a superpower war. In particular, we are talking about a possible confrontation between the countries of the bloc with Russia and China, and preparations for war can prevent it. And this is the goal of NATO allies, Milley stressed. Reported by Diana Kolesnik, Christina Dombrovska, UATV News.